Hello everyone and welcome back to Hiroshima in Japan. I'm in the Peace Park at the moment. Behind me is the Atomic Bomb Dome. So what an awesome setting to do this video in. I actually filmed a video here, almost in a similar location, way back in April about the Japan Rail Pass. So it's great to be back here. Today I want to talk about two things. Firstly, workaways and what a workaway is. I'm currently doing a workaway in Hiroshima at a hostel. And the second point is my experience of arranging a workaway in Japan emphasis on the word my experience because obviously it may differ for different people if you're specifically here for the point about japan you can fast forward to that time index up there just so i'm not wasting your time telling about something you already know so let's get started on a work away so i'm surprised that many people don't know what this is actually um but a work away is basically a good way for long-term travelers or backpackers to extend their trip by working or volunteering with various organizations in different countries. And you know what? I'm gonna be quite honest about it. There are two definitions really. Number one, see if you can guess which one is the incorrect one. Number one, it's a great way of getting free accommodation so you don't have to spend any money on accommodation. Or the second thing, it's a great way for hosts in other countries to accommodate travelers that are gonna add some sort of skill or add some value to their organization. Can you guess which one is correct? Yes, it is the second one. So I've said this before in another video, one of the biggest misconceptions I think about workaways is that people think it's just for travelers to get free accommodation by being lazy and not doing anything. You know, that's a very broad statement. You know, more than likely if you've done a workaway you are not like that and most people aren't but there are unfortunately a, a small percentage of people that have that mindset if you have that mindset forget about it or at least reevaluate your thinking so that you're actually thinking more in terms of what you can offer the host that you're staying with so to access workaway and the whole list of hosts available all over the world you just have to go to workaway.info and you have to pay a subscription. It's a yearly subscription. All the details of this and the link will be in the description below. When I did it, it was about six months ago. I think it was about $28 if I am correct, but obviously that price may change and you may be watching this in a year's time. So it's best just to look at the description below. And what you do is quite simply enter your country that you want to do a work away in, potentially the region of that country as well. And also you can filter the search results by, for example, if you want to work in a hostel, if you want to do a construction project, etc., And that will bring up a list of workaways available in that country that you've chosen. Now, what you do next is basically email all of them, the ones that you're interested in. The biggest advice I would give is do not think that you're being clever by time saving and writing a obligatory random email that you're just going to copy and paste to every single one of them make an effort to write a proper message to each one because the thing is everyone's requirements of you are going to be different so what you might send to one person may not be relevant at all to another work away now when you look at each work away you will have a list of expected duties that you will have to carry out with that work away. Now, this isn't a compulsory list, it's just things that you may have to do in your time there. And you know what? Again, another bit of advice is think about what you can offer that organization on top of just what they're saying that you have to do. So for example, if it's a hostel, as I'm doing, yes, obviously you'll do things like cleaning, you'll do things like checking people in and out, but you've also got to think about what you can offer them. So in my case, it's, English so as an online English teacher I can potentially offer some support to locals with language exchange and it's a great opportunity as well to learn another language another thing as well is YouTube obviously I do a YouTube channel so one of the things I've said to many workaways in Japan is about doing a promotional video for their hostel you might not have to do these things but it just helps sell yourself in effect to that organization or that work away and it will increase the chance that you're actually going to get a place there so let's move on to japan now this is a interesting subject i'll tell you my story so about six months ago i was thinking of doing a work away in japan but in the end i gave up because it was quite possibly one of the most difficult things i've ever known in my life 
And if you look at on a lot of Facebook groups, for example, Japan Backpackers, Japan Travel, there's a lot of questions from people saying, how do people organize a work away in Japan? And if you've done work aways elsewhere, you might think, David, what are you talking about? It's really easy to organize a work away. Yes, in a lot of cases it is. So if you're looking at countries in Southeast Asia, for example, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, it generally is a lot easier to organize a work away than it is in Japan and South Korea, especially. I think this is largely because you know there's more of a market for backpackers and travelers out in those countries rather than in Japan and South Korea. Um, so it's generally a lot easier to get a work away in those countries. But the big thing about Japan, okay, is that in general, you will require a working holiday visa in order to do a work away in those countries. Even if you're just volunteering and you are not getting any payment for your job, which for me sounds a bit crazy, but obviously every country has different rules. And the big thing, the big problem about working holiday visas for me is that you can only get a working holiday visa generally if you're between the ages of 18 and 30 and you are from particular countries. And I'm gonna put a list here of countries that are applicable in terms of a working holiday visa. I'm 35 years old, okay? I know I'm old, so I cannot get one. It's not an option for me. So how the hell am I in Japan now doing a work away well I'll tell you so what I did as I said earlier I emailed literally every single one I think it was 59 hostels in Japan just to see what I could get because in their adverts you do find that um, they will say you do require a working holiday visa they will specifically say it however not all of them do so quite simply you just need to email them and ask the question basically um, whether you can actually volunteer on a tourist visa Okay, once you've sent all your emails, one of five things is going to happen, okay? Definitely one of these five. Number one, you're not gonna get a reply. This will be either because your message was rubbish and they don't want you, quite simply, or one of the things I've noticed about Japan and South Korea is that replying to emails doesn't seem to be high on the priority list and you can be waiting sometimes weeks or months, months, ridiculous, for someone to reply to an email. The second thing that is going to happen is that you will get a reply. However, it will be, no, sorry, working holiday visa is required. You cannot do it on a tourist visa. The third thing that is going to happen is that they will say, yes, you do need a working holiday visa. However, you can do certain duties at that work away on a tourist visa. So if you're in a hostel, it may be just cleaning that you're able to do. In terms of a more managerial role in the hostel or um, a job that you're actually getting paid for, you won't be able to do it on a tourist visa. The fourth reply you're gonna get will be, yes, you can come and do a work away at my hostel or wherever. However, they may prioritize people that are on a working holiday visa because a WHV is six months in Japan. Whereas a tourist visa for me is 90 days, three months. And depending on the type of work away it is, they may actually require people to be there for longer. I'll give you an example. I wanted to do one at a cat rescue place near Fukushima where they rescue cats from the tsunami and earthquake a few years ago. However, due to the fact that they want people to bond with the cats over a longer period, they said, no, sorry, they want people on a six month working holiday visa. And point number five will be the one that you have been waiting for, the simplest one, basically, yes, you can come and do a work away on a tourist visa, quite simple. With this though, a couple of things are gonna happen. You may have to fill out a questionnaire that they'll send you on email. You may have to do a Skype interview, or in the case that I've had here, you won't have to do anything, just turn up. So um, all in all, you're gonna get a lot of different replies. It can be very frustrating with the waiting. Unfortunately, you do just have to wait, but the biggest advice I will give with this will just be persistent. You'll get there in the end, and actually, they're kind of like buses now. I'm still getting replies now from people saying that, yes, you can come to and do a work away, but obviously I'm already doing one. So um, yeah, that's my bit of advice on getting a work away in Japan. It can be frustrating, but just keep going. So um, next up on this channel will be Christmas. It's the 23rd of December right now. So um, there's gonna be a Christmas day video if you wanna watch that and a New Year's Eve video as well, and basically see more about workaways in Japan, which I'm gonna film over the next few months then make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that like button as well, as always, as all YouTubers say. So um, on that note, I'll catch you later.